Uh, there is this little paper that came out on uh, some battery technology that's been designed. Uh, they are called polypeptide organic batteries. Uh, as we know, uh, batteries are now in more and more demand and as we go zooming into the future with uh, wanting to electrify everything, especially the electric vehicles and the battery technology needed for that. Already lithium ion batteries are very popular with everything uh, we use that's electrical uh, or elec uh, for example iPhones, watches, uh, laptops, cars and so on. So this has infinite uh, demand and already many scenarios are playing out in terms of the damages to the environment in mining for these precious metals, lithium, cobalt, nickel, copper and so on. So recycling the batteries after the uh, use, after a lifetime uh, use of the batteries is another big issue. So anything that's organic is going to reduce the uh, issue of mining and potential harm to the environment, water, air, etc. And also organic batteries can degrade probably much better than the recycling we have uh, in place for the batteries which obviously don't work as completely as you would want. So we end up basically uh, converting uh, precious uh, earth elements, minerals and metals into uh, irrecyclable junk uh, and that's non irreversible junk that's always something uh, one has to worry about even as we are relying on them to uh, reduce carbon emissions and hit our global warming targets and so on. So this technology is a bit complicated in terms of the chemistry so I'm not a chemist so I'm just going to make it very simple brief uh, just reading most of the things and explaining the things as best as I understand from my own research and uh, let's read this we have so this is the summary of the article we have designed a metal free all polypeptide organic radical battery comprising redox active amino acid macromolecules that degrade on demand so polypeptide organic uh, Molecules are basically long chains which are uh, organic and uh, they have uh, some properties that are very uh, useful. Redox active, uh, so those are some uh, biologens uh, which have a unique property of how they get reduced and oxidized back so that you can use them uh, repeatedly for storing energy and in battery technology that's what you are basically trying to do. Uh, this concept represents a first step towards sustainable recyclable batteries and minimizing global dependence on strategic metals that we just mentioned. So Vialogen, which is that special uh, unique molecules that have redox ready properties that are very useful and bitempo polypeptide anodes and cathodes respectively were synthesized uh, via ring opening polymerization of highly reactive cyclic N carboxy anhydrides. Okay, so just listen to the words, and basically, it's chemistry that is being used to uh, do the work in general. You have uh, anodes producing electrons in a charged state, they can uh, produce electrons and ions. So, when you uh, link it up to any device which needs electricity, then uh, the electrons flow uh, through the device, uh, provide electricity and then go to the cathode and the ions have to go through the electrolyte to the other side and there are membranes to prevent an inundation of uh, all the ions to one side and so on and uh, essentially when you that's a discharge step so as we will see in a recharge step you basically have to uh, put the uh, uh, electrons and ions back to the anode from the cathode and so that's what these uh, processes are basically related to. Okay, um, <coughs> uh, So polymerization of highly reactive cyclic N uh, carboxy anhydrides followed by sequential post polymerization modification to incorporate the redox, redox active groups. The polypeptide battery reached a maximum charge capacity of 37.8 milliampere hour per gram, theoretic capacity of 44.5 milliampere hour per gram. Uh, the uh, active components 
degraded on demand in the presence of acid to regenerate the starting amino acids and other building blocks. So this is really uh, a good property to have as well, uh, regenerating the starting amino acids. So essentially you are restarting the chemical system. Looking forward, uh, the main challenges are preventing dissolution of the active material and boosting the overall cell capacity. Future studies should focus on preventing dissolution of the polypeptides by cross-linking, by post-processing modification, or by taking advantage of the solubility of the polypeptides in flow battery cells. 45 is here the reference, sorry I didn't remove it, but it should have been removed. Um, this, are the, this is the schematic here, a polypeptide-based organic radical battery. Schematics of a polypeptide-based organic radical battery and the reactions that occur during charging and discharging are shown on the left and right respectively. We'll see in a minute. The redox reactions for the tempo and viologen pendant groups are shown in the middle. For example, here, during charging, nitroxi nitroxide uh, radical functional groups at the cathode oxidize to oxoammonium cations and viologen functional groups at the anode reduced, reduced to their neutral forms. So here is a charging state where you're basically using electricity to charge the battery to create the uh, chemical potential which then can be used to produce electricity. So there is the cathode, uh, so that's the current collector. In this case, uh, in the discharge state you have anode producing the electrons and ions as I said and the electrons flow through whatever your device is providing a charge and then the electrons flowed, uh, flow to the cathode uh, which is discharging uh, in this step. Uh, so you basically uh, charge where you are flowing back the electrons from cathode to the anode and ions are flowing back uh, as you see the arrows here and you put the system back in the chemical potential or charged state and the reactions involved here I'm not going to go into detail these are basically what's mentioned here uh, during charging nitroxide radical functional groups at the cathode oxidize to oxoammonium cations as we see here and there are various chemicals involved here and uh, <coughs> viologen functional groups at the anode reduced to their neutral forms here okay um, so here again we are uh, in the discharge state we want to use the chemical potential to generate electricity so the ions that are produced at the anode then flow through the device as I said to the cathode and the uh, uh, ions are flowing from the cathode to the uh, anode here okay that's generally how the the batteries work uh, whether it's lithium ion you have an anode you have a cathode you have an electrolyte and sometimes you need uh, the separation of the anode and the cathode to prevent uh, inundation of ions to one side and electrons <coughs> you can look up the details as i said i'm not an expert in these chemical reactions i'm just providing a brief introduction because this is some exciting new uh, idea that's been put out and tested in the lab. Amino acid modification, so this is uh, the uh, steps here showing uh, synthesis of redox active polypeptides. Uh, a and B, so B is here, A is here, we'll go back to A in a minute. Synthesis strategy uh, and detailed synthetic schemes and B for redox active polypeptides. Modified am amino acids are converted into polypeptides followed by installation of the desired redox active groups. The Vialogen group was installed as the anode active material which uh, because of its unique properties can give you uh, the redox reactions. Uh, there is some details about how it actually happens in Vialogens and why they are unique and uh, useful for energy storage which you can read up. Um, so the Vialogen group was installed as the anode uh, active material uh, the tempo nitroxide radical was installed as the cathode active material uh, DCC and N prime decyclo 
carboxidamide. <laughs> you can see I'm struggling to read it. Uh, so all these chemicals are involved, which I won't bother to read because I'm going to just mash it up. So here we are in the uh, step A where where you are synthesize, synthesis strategy. So you have amino acid mos modification, monomer synthesis. So viologens are there, amino acids are there, terminal alkyne uh, peptide bond, alkyne chloride, alkyl chloride, alkyl iodide, tempo precursor, tempo thiol, what are all these things? Basically, these are the steps involved in uh, synthesizing the uh, step, uh, the synthesis step. So you have the activation, so installation and installation and activation. So you have the uh, two sides providing you these complicated reactions in the synthesis uh, of vialogen polypeptides and synthesis of bitempo polypeptides. So many, many details which I'm not going to get into unfortunately, but if you are interested you can read up. So the idea is fairly straightforward if you understand the chemical reactions, but basically I wanted to portray this uh, as a simple podcast showing that organic materials without the strategic metals can be designed and has some unique properties of how it can be recycled, recharged, discharge cycles are very important and degrade, uh, recycling it by basically dissolving the organic matter uh, into harmless neutral materials uh, is very different than uh, the amount of uh, precious metals that are used in batteries and are piling up uh, in places and one has to be very careful on how they are disposed of and so on. Uh, I'm not sure everybody is as careful when you use these little batteries and uh, just throw them out uh, when you are done with them or they are done with their uh, cycles. Okay, so just uh, look at it, read the original paper you're, if, if you're interested in more details. comes with many references and details that I have not uh, included here. Okay.